maybe we can kind of take a dive into into your piece reckoning um or yeah. sorry excuse me the, the reckoning um yeah. <laughs> and so it's it's you know in in your program notes um you write that you know it's it's kind of an explore exploration of black expression through the intersection of jazz blues and rock idioms um mm -hmm. So, I mean, it based just based on what you told me, it sounds like, you know, what you did, you know, in your schooling and also in, you know, in high school was, was very much that. And there was a lot of kind of different things going on. Um, would, could you talk a little bit more about that and kind of how those styles inform your style? Yeah, um, regarding the piece for this one or just in general? Like um, in, in general, I'm um, also kind of in, in terms of the piece. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so um, my dad and his music his taste in music had a huge effect on me and my just my parents and like um as far as like being black too as far as like motown and um a whole lot of soul a whole lot of fusion a lot of jazz um and then also me being in the classical tradition and really delving into that and then going to college and going into new complexity and sound design and and electroacoustic stuff um i have a very seeking spirit. And so I just like to, uh, I'm also a Gemini. So I just like to be in a lot of I like to stay creative and I like to seek out a lot of different things. And so specifically with this piece, um, before COVID, I went to visit my parents uh, for Christmas and my dad bought himself an electric bass and he wanted me to teach him how to play. Um, and I'm not a bassist, but I can kind of make my way around like an electric bass. And so I recorded myself playing different like weird chords and small little cells or fragments. Um, and then I had the purpose, like I had the intention of putting it into a piece, but I just didn't have the space to do it until you guys came along. Mm. So um, some of the vocal recordings of me improvising vocally, but then also on the bass, um, in addition to few, um, bringing together different groups as far as like, uh, you know, the Stone Temple Pilots, they're a rock band. Uh, one of, some of their uh, harmonic language and then their support as far as bass. And then also there's a fusion group called Hiatus Coyote. Mm. Um, the lead singer, not Napalm, um, she plays like such great chords on the bass, um, in addition to very melodic and rhythmic things. So a lot of different kind of things went together with this, but it was really fun to put together. Awesome. I, I mean, it, it's, it's, I'm very excited um, to kind of, you know, break into this with you. Um, I, I wanted to ask, you know, because uh, again, you know, in, in, in your notes, um, you know, just, just to quote, um, you write, this piece is written to encourage others to acknowledge their own reckonings, be it a reckoning of the body, the mind, the soul, the heart, or the spirit. We must settle the reckonings within ourselves in order to avoid wrecking the paths of others, Black Lives Matter, which I think is really, really beautiful, beautifully put. Um, would you mind like, kind of elaborating on that um, in, an, in that vein, um, you know, is it, is it important to you to kind of, to make that very apparent in, inside of this piece, you know, as a political statement, as a composer? I would say, yeah, like sp very much so for this one. Um, and to, you know, just speak honestly, I can't really think that, I don't know, I haven't had a creative space where I felt, um, completely comfortable being unapologetically myself, you know, and um, being that this um, collaboration is for this movement and is for Black composers, um, I decided to just go full in and write a piece dedicated to that. Um, there's a lot of, um, just in my experience also with music academia, having to not put limits on yourself, but make yourself appear differently or make yourself uh, I don't know, put limits on yourself so that you don't, um, I don't even know what the verb or word is, but just not over, not take too, up too much space or like overpower or whatever it is, you know? And so with this, um, I wanted to do all of those things. And mm -hmm. so that's why, like, I wanted to just throw everything in the pot and uh, show that Black is 
beautifully intersectional. Um, it's a power. And um, when I was able to just allow myself to express that and to just write it, um, it there was a sense of release and a sense of like, finally, I wrote this piece that um, politically I've been thinking about, you know, and mm -hmm. feeling it existing in um and so yeah for this one heck yeah it's political and um it's dedicated to black expression and just blackness amazing mm -hmm. i if if you're if you're comfortable i would maybe love you know for you to speak maybe a little bit more about um feeling like you like you you we are are not always comfortable writing maybe what what you want to write in terms it's in, in kind of as opposed to this context um i think also um because there's i think it's important to discern also with like how the title of your piece can be well in addition to your program notes being um political you know and the program notes are the area where the composer really gets to speak for her, himself, their self, um, on what they intend the music to be. Um, and so I wouldn't say that, like, uh, as far as the notes on the page, that I wasn't able to express myself that way, but calling it what it is mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. saying what it is in the program notes and being very unapologetic about it um, is not something that I've always felt comfortable doing regarding um, talking about being black and being a black woman and mm -hmm. uh, existing in that way. So yeah, that's more of what I was saying with that. With, with, with that all being said, I just want to like, thank you for, for being so open and, and sharing with us today. Um, with that, well, why don't we kind of get into the, the, the piece and, and we can, I can play a little bit and, um, and we can talk. It's so fun to play, um, and I think it's 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 awesome. And what I love about it is that it really makes use of the low register really, really well. Um, good, because I was a little nervous. I was sending you those drafts earlier, but that's yeah, good. Yeah, I um, the the one thing I, I was curious about is that so you have some pits in the in the beginning. Um, and I know we originally had some 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 bar talk pizzas or just kind of regular pizzas a um, little bit later in it as well. Um, but I was just I was noticing that as we go through this the whole piece, um, there's a lot of there, there's there's pits in the beginning, and we actually don't have it at, um, again. Um, I'm still toying with that idea because I want to, I wanted to use, you know, the full tessitura of the instrument and like, um, make sure you're playing things. Yeah. Just like writing idiomatically. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I for <laughs> weirdly forgot that like with Bartok's hits is like, you still have to finger the fingerboard. Right. And still be able to. Well, so I mean, it, it depends on, I, on the, the note. Right. But, um, so like the, so like a, like the open strings are fine, but I, do you mean by like, I have to get behind the string very much like this. So it, it, it takes some, um, preparation. Um, and usually it, it depends kind of coming from like, for example, just from measure six into measure seven. So, 
So even even that, I have to make sure that I'm setting, but it's it's very possible because I'm coming from a point of pits anyway, and I have some time to actually pick up my bow instead of holding it the whole time. Um, so that that works. But what what you know, Mason and I had talked about before was this part in in letter B at the bottom of the first page. Um, mm -hmm. with, these were originally Bartok pitches, right? The which yeah. is. Which I think could be really cool. It's just that you know, if you just if you if you take a look at what I'm actually doing, so it's. I think it, I think it, it can sound really cool, but it, it's just it's a little frantic. So I. Um, I do you think if oh. they were regular pitches, would that work? Like just regular mm -hmm. just accent? Because I was like, okay, yeah, like that's going to be a little aggressive, but. I still, like, it would be cool if you were playing those double stops and articulating them with the pits afterwards, so. Absolutely, yeah. Um, let's, so just like a regular pits. That actually works really nicely. Yeah, what if, what if cause you played, so like that first pits you had, you were able to snap a little bit more would it be okay to like snap like do the kind of bar talk pits for the first pits and then the other two are regular yeah i think so let's uh that works great okay, that works really perfect. great yeah so let me put that in context for you I think that that's going to be fine. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. With, with with some practice, I think it'll be very comfortable for me. Oh, um, yeah. it sounds great. That's so fun. Yeah. I think it's going to be great. Um, you awesome. I have I have a quick I, I put a couple more questions um, on the second page. Um, mm -hmm. So at the end of measure 26, um, on that seventh beat there, um, you have a sforzando and then a dotted line kind of going through that entire bar of measure uh, 27. And so I just, I, I actually, I've never really seen that before and I wanted to know what, what you were, uh, what that was exactly. <laughs> yeah, so this may have been a mistake also because originally I thought like, I mean, it'd be cool if he did uh, like tremolos and like really increasing to that forte on the seven eight. Um, mm -hmm. But then I thought I, there are triplets in there too. So like, I was like, yeah, maybe that wouldn't work either. So maybe it's just um, articulating that uh, double stop. I don't know if, what is the one Italian word like, Longa, lunga, longa, like oh yeah, like, yeah, like really bowing that and then being quiet as you make your way up. Mm. I don't know if that was like the right dynamic to prepare, but well, the, the sforzando I think is actually fine in of itself. I think I was just confused about the dotted line. So I think so with the um, what I can do is is so so kind of like a. I can come away and then crescendo into 20, 28. Is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I use the dotted line um, for format reasons because Finale loves to not do what you ask it to do. Oh, so. I, I totally understand. Yeah. Um, and you know what, what's funny is when, in my, when I was practicing that this, this morning, I was. Um, that's like kind of what I was doing anyway, so it's very natural. <laughs> um, let me let me just play a little bit of that um, in the beginning. Um, I'll just start on I'll just start on twenty five, and I'll try to. Be a problem is this sure. low this low G sharp to high. Um, so I, I 
right? So I'm here on this, which is fine, but then the problem is, actually, maybe it's not. <laughs> Let me. It's like, so that, is it okay to hit the first, that first G sharp, and then maybe instead of playing a G sharp, playing um, the fifth, like you could play D sharp, and mm. then it's, uh, and then and then go back to the G natural. You said or the yeah. you play uh, double stop G sharp down and then double stop then a D sharp and then go to ah uh, so like the root and then the fifth ah uh, uh, okay so so the so the fourth here and then. That one, do you mean? Or, oh, sorry, sorry. Instead of playing those two, because you were saying the, the low G all the way to the high G, playing just a D sharp and then going to the high G. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. Um, so, like that. Oh, sorry, excuse me. I think that, actually, that works, let me, uh, That 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 works fine. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Change that. Okay. The the reasoning, if you know, just behind that is, you know, if you can see that I have kind of a crazy yeah. between the, the the lower register there. Um, so I think um, it's going to be great. Um, I wanted to ask you, is there anything in, in, in particular that you want to, that you want to hear? Um, I'd love to hear the four eight measures uh, when we then go into rehearsal mark C. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is supposed to be very metal. Like you have your um, double stops there um, and then increasing over pressure as far as like kind of making it sound like a distorted yeah. Um, and then when you relax back into the three four on measure thirty nine. Sure. Like some basic kind of like some William Bartok kind of sound. You know what I mean? Uh, as I'm, I'm sorry. You say that one more time. You just go a little soft on the mic. Yeah. So when you're in measure thirty nine um, and you're relaxing into the rehearsal mark C, um, that is. That little phrase right there, it's kind of like um, it's a little bartok -y as far as uh, being very uh, forceful in some of his like, um, you know, like as a Hungarian composer. So um, seeing how you can melt back into the whole jazz inflection. Mm, okay. All right, let's give it a shot. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take from kind of that like pickup figure into the four eight and thirty two, so from thirty one and thirty two. Yeah. Uh -huh. So. you can really get metal with that one right there. Um, and I mean, you can even start accelerating probably a little earlier. I know I didn't put it earlier. Sure, sure. The, the 36, um, you could start accelerating there. Um, your overpressure sounds so rad, love that. Um, and then, yeah, when you relax into measure, um, 40, that was really great with being very pointed with the rhythm. So sounds okay. really good. Okay. Why don't I give it a, a, one more time and then um, actually, why don't, why don't we just move on because I think we... Yeah. The, sounds really awesome. <laughs> um, the one thing I, I wanted to maybe bring up to you and something I, I brought up in, um, in that email that I sent you after you sent that the second draft is 
I, I love, I, I mean, I think the, the where it's written actually works really, really well. Um, but I, what I'm wondering is maybe there's a place for, um, for us to maybe utilize the higher register a little bit more, just to kind of um, make it a little bit kind of more even in terms of register. And so I, I was wondering, so it's like somewhere that I was thinking about was at the very end, at letter E. Um, oh, yeah. So, I want like, your opinion of it just because, um, yeah, I wanted to learn from you as the bass player about oh, what yeah. you're um, Well, so, so um, what I was thinking is just as an example, so coming from that last bar of the page, so what, what is it? Um, <laughs> Like that would be really cool. So. And then it kind of we could keep the low the low things here. And then maybe this is up. So I, I also wanted to ask, um, it would be awesome. I, I'd love to, you know, this, this section in the, the 4A, I think it's really beautiful and a kind of a, a really nice contrast. The... You know, so I'm wondering even if we, there was, there was a part where we could have that, you know, a kind of a very like um, ethereal, like, something like that I think could really you know take take something and make it you know almost a different section or or kind of whatever whatever you you feel yeah. like I'm so glad that you're bringing this up too because I was like I don't want to write too high um but yeah I love this idea and even in measure 60 um like expanding that whole phrase like playing it regularly but then having you soar up and play it up a register i and love that in return so yeah yeah i'd say you know um i think i think the fear of playing high uh, for, sorry of writing high is 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 very real and you're definitely not alone in that um so i think you know it's, it's definitely something to address um you know if there's any any composers that are kind of starting this this writing for bass journey, you know, I always say, you know, write, write too much first, you know, be daring, and then, and then we can always dial back, you know, I, um, just to give you some perspective, so the highest note on my fingerboard um, is, a, is, a, is a kind of, is, is, this is a harmonic, the D, really comfortably as a C sharp, So there's there's a huge range that kind of we can be ca capable of here. Um, so kind of exploring things where we can maybe do. You know, so excuse my intonation, but <laughs> you know. Lovely, I love that. Yeah, there the fear is real because I um because even like you know when you submit music and you send it off, you're like. I swear I know what I'm doing, you know, and you don't want to like write anything that's like completely impossible. So this is very helpful. And I love the idea of taking it up the range two to really have it sing. So awesome. yeah. I think, yeah, I, I think it's going to be an awesome piece. I think it's going to be really fun and um, really great to play. And I mean, and even, you know, um, you know, from our, our very kind of quick talks, it's, it's, very idiomatic already. So I think like, you know, it'll it'll only get it'll only get better and better, I think, by the time we we, we actually play it, you know. <laughs> 